Vielen, vielen Dank. Super, ich freue mich. Okay, also, for the people here who speak English and not so viel, much German, this is for you, Dennis. <laughs> This is the last part of the book. Um, the book is written in reverse order, so the last part is actually the beginning of the story. Sorry for the spoiler. Okay. <laughs> Till is speaking to me in German, which anyway is our language of serious talk. Es macht keinen Spaß mehr, he says. I think about what he is saying, what he is about to say, and consider whether it will be kinder, gentler in English, It's no fun anymore. Fun? I snort. It kind of erupts out of me. I pause and look at the balcony opposite ours, the one with the beautiful flowers. Obviously, they don't have children. There was this thing called a marriage ceremony, I continue sardonically, and I remember you being there, saying something like, for richer, for poorer. I usually don't reply in English when I'm angry, but this is to be filed under special occasions, exceptions that break the rule. My voice is icily calm. Now he shakes his head and looks utterly forlorn, loosening, losing, lost. My heart aches. I bite my lip. It bleeds a little. The clock ticks. Till looks me in the eyes longer than he has in the last six months in total, which really isn't saying much. Es macht mir keinen Spaß mehr. The additional emphasis, it's no fun anymore for me, makes all the difference. Till has finally drawn a line in the sand. We continue to stand side by side, looking down on the street scene below us. Nothing has changed, and yet the world has just turned upside down. It takes me some time to realize that these two facts are, are not contradictory. Actually, in a few weeks, I will still be chewing on it. I am holding onto the balcony. My grip is getting visibly tighter. Till makes a gesture towards touching my hand. This is not entirely wrong, but I don't want it. I pull away abruptly, and to disguise that, I scratch my arm instead. He looks hurt, but actually I don't care. By that I mean I don't want to care. And then he starts to speak. Incessantly, I would even say uncontrollably. Words pour forth out of his mouth, so many that they cannot be contained by his chest. They fall on the balcony floor and they slip through the gaps of the railings onto the pavement. They bounce softly before rolling into the gutter. It's funny how I can actually hear the impact of the words hitting the concrete slabs below, but I have no idea at all what Till is trying to tell me and the rushing in my ears becomes louder. I look at him and see his lips moving, see the tears falling through his beard, see the snot collecting on his upper lip. I see him shaking, but I can't hear a damn word he is saying. What, Till, what? Does he hear me? Do the words actually leave my mouth? What do I know? I want desperately for this not to be happening. But at the same time, I am perfectly calm, perfectly calm. I know this is my only chance. I am hoping that if I stay quiet enough, it will all just go away. But I realize the quieter I am, the more frantic Till is becoming, which is kind of irritating because he is the bastard who's leaving me. And I'm just starting to feel incredibly sorry for him when I hear her name. Did you? Did you just say what I think you said? Till stops talking and takes a deep breath. Okay, so those words at least I do say out loud. Or maybe Till has just gotten slower because he's tired. He begins his sentence anew. Desta and I, this is already more than too much information and he knows it. Since when did the words Till end no longer include my name? Till falters and then stops. The sentence remains half empty. He asks me what I'm thinking. I simply smile. <laughs>